Now, regardless of the isotope you choose to use, there are some basic sample collection procedures you should follow, which you can also find in detail on our website, but I'll outline them quickly here for you as well. So after you collect your core, you will want to follow these steps. First, you'll want to cut the core tube longitudinally with a coated piano wire, if you can find one. And then you'll want to slice it using a Teflon sheet. So you slice one slice, you clean the sheet to make sure there's no contamination, move on to the next section and slice again, and you repeat until the core is cut into two slices. And you should record any changes in sediment morphology, any transitions or events or organic layers that you see, and make sure to take photographs of each segment for documentation purposes while it's still within core form. Next, you'll want to use a ceramic blade to cut out sections or wedges at a different level, depending on the measurement you're interested in. You'll then place the sample into a pre-labeled container. You'll want to clean the blade after each time and repeat on all sample sections. Make sure you collect any discrete material with tweezers as well. You can dissect or sieve the sediments for observations if necessary, but make sure you keep all components from the slice. When you're ready for analysis, place the sample in plastic wrap and place in a labeled plastic vial. Now the exact packaging recommendations do depend on which isotope you're actually measuring, so make sure you check this out before submission.